Manor Lords, a game set around building your very own medieval village, managing your population's needs and defending them from invasions. But today we take it a step further and attempt to reach 1000 population. I don't even know if the game can handle this, so please pray for my PC. Also, if everybody watching subscribed, I'd hit 100k in no time. And honestly, it would mean so much to me. Thank you. So for this run today, we are going with max raider frequency and the highest level of the max bandit camps and stuff. So this means that we're possibly going to have less than a year between each raid. So uh, I've never tried it with this before, so I don't know how powerful they can get. But we'll see. Hopefully, we don't lose to a raid because that, uh, that would be pretty sad. That's interesting. So we have spawned right at the top next to the other lord so we may be fighting him pretty soon today i don't know how this is gonna go but for resources we have a little bit of clay a little bit of stone we do have some berries an iron deposit and a rich wild animal deposit so we have a lot of hides and stuff which is great i mean most of our resources are kind of spread out so i think we start our initial settlement in this gap in the forest right here now for some limitations today all our building needs to be in this one zone so we can't start another town and count that towards our population i think it'll be a lot more difficult just to have it all inside one tile and also i want to try and make the actual village look somewhat realistic right so i'm not just gonna like row out a bunch of houses because i guess we it'd probably be easier to do it that way because Fitting in a thousand population might be quite difficult. I've never tried it before, but we'll see. But yeah, I think we start our first town then right by here. So first things we need when getting started is, of course, we need a logging camp. And we'll chuck them right by here. We're also going to want to get a woodcutter's lodge down. And of course, we're going to want our forager's hut. I guess we'll chuck that on this side of the road. And we're also going to want our hunting camp. That's just the initial village set up, ready to go. And we're just going to go ahead, connect it all with roads. Just like that. So everything is now connected. We do have a new message. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. So we have 365 days till our very first raid. And for our coat of arms, for, you know, how snap. We have gone with a purple, you know, I think that's just back in the day, purple, that meant you were rich, you know, so we're hoping for the best here, manifesting richness. And while they're building this, I also want to say uh, thank you for everybody who watched the other video and uh, give me some tips for like the army combat, because I've never played too much Total War, so a lot of that stuff I'm not great at, so I do appreciate all the tips on that. And also, a lot of people told me I was saying, line it, I did it again. Linen wrong. Apparently it's linen. I was saying linen, which, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So uh, thank you for that as well. There we go. So after that has been built, we now have our hunting camp, a logging camp, a woodcutter, and our forager's hut all built. So we're going to get one family working in each. So we have a supply of food and a supply of wood and, of course, some fuel as well. And now what we need is our first couple of houses. We only have four timber, though. We need at least ten, as it's two timber per house but for this town this will be like our industrial zone and then our main houses will be somewhere around here more central so we're gonna build a road and we'll bring it around these trees just like that so we're gonna start our housing right here and you know what i guess what we will do is we'll get our market set up as well ready to go so when they have supplies they can start chucking it on the market straight away that fits 55 so that should last us quite a while it will get full eventually and we'll just do that and get a road going all the way around it. So that'll be our little town center later on. And what we need to do is decide where our first houses are going to go. I guess we'll have them slightly closer to this area. So we'll just chuck an extra road up. Well, one thing we desperately need at the start is a storehouse. I like to chuck that right next to the market as well. I feel like it just makes the most sense. There we go. So we have 10 timber. So let's get our first five houses down. So, you know, the people aren't just all sad because they're homeless. And we can actually hopefully start growing so we're gonna chuck three houses in there like that i think and you know what we'll chuck a couple of smaller houses just like that right in front of the marketplace once they're all built we'll have enough houses for everybody these ones are not great because they don't have massive back gardens so they're not going to be great for like vegetables and stuff but they're quite small they'll be central so maybe later on these could be like our blacksmiths our tanners our cobblers and stuff like that the problem we're having right now without the houses, they come all the way back over here to sleep in the night. And then they have to come all the way over here to actually go to work. But I really like how we got this tile because we could put a village over here. Could put a village down here later. There's so much space. So we don't have to build like just one massive village. Although I don't know how efficient it is to have like more than one 
rather than just expand outwards. But you know what? I guess we'll try and find out later. See how it goes. With this, I'm not sure. It could be split into two parts. So if I don't finish it today, it will be split into two. It just might work better because I don't know how long this is going to take. And here we go. Any second, we are going to have our first house of many. Uh, if they hurry up, come on. Get to work. No slacking off. This guy hates his wife. <laughs> just shouting at her constantly. I mean, this was back in the day, so it doesn't surprise me. Oh, is that it? There it is. Our very first house. Can we go inside? No, fair enough. But there it is. So now we have one family with a house. We just need to get the other five houses up. And then we need to work on our approval to start growing. And there we go. Just like that, we have our fifth house built. So we have reached a small village level. So we do get a perk point to spend. Now, you only get three in total, I believe. Or is it four? I'm not too sure. We're definitely going to want to pick up trade logistics and better deals again today. Trade logistics caps the trade route cost to 25. And then better deals takes 10 off everything you buy. But... We might not need them yet. We could buy them a little bit later, but I don't really know what else to get first. Maybe bury deposit double then. Or we could go for beekeeping and collect some honey. I've never actually used that before. Or we could go with charcoal burning. This converts one firewood into two charcoal, making it twice as efficient. You know what? Let's pick up that. We may not use it just yet, but one thing you do struggle with is firewood later on so we could just either import it or use that that could be really good and there we go this is telling us we just got our delivery of spears and large shields so we can make a spear militia now and we have enough population to fill out 10 but if we look up here we still have 10 shields and 10 spears spare so when we get more families moving in now we can have up to a militia of 20 so that will be very very useful to defend from these constant raids we're going to suffer with oh Nine meat and three logs were just stolen by a bandit camp. So how many bandit camps we got? We got two bandit camps on the map. And this is a problem with them. If you leave them, they just start stealing all your stuff. But with only 10 in our army, I don't know if we want to fight them just yet. We want to get to at least 16, I think. Because they often have 16 people. So if we can at least match them, we should win without any losses, really. Or minimal losses, at least. But now we have to work out how we can raise their approvals. So to do that... We need to get the church built, which, uh, could we do that pretty soon? You know what? Yes, we could. I think then, let's start working on our church. So, we're going to have to get a soul pit down so they can actually start making our planks. So, we'll do that, and then as soon as it's built, we'll just get a family working there. As soon as we get 20 planks, we'll get the church down, kind of central in town. Maybe near the marketplace. So, if we do that, we can have the church right by here. We could also just specialize one house to a chicken coop. Now, I don't think chicken coop needs a big garden. I don't think it makes a difference. So maybe these sort of small gardens, they're not very big. So we can get one chicken coop down. And then once those eggs actually get on the market, it will increase their approval because they'll have even more market food variety. So you really just want as many different types of food on the market as possible. And there we go. With that saw pit being worked, we now have 20 planks. So we can stop somebody working there and... Let's get this church down already. This should really boost them to above 50% approval. And then we can start getting more houses down to grow. So wooden church. You know what? Right there. That's kind of central to where we're going to be building. So I like that. And there we go. Now the eggs are on the market. If we look, there's eggs, meat, and berries. The approval has gone up to 48. So yeah, I think the eggs was a good choice. They're stealing our eggs. The bandits came and stole one single egg. You know what? That's, that's a terrible raid. I actually feel sorry for you. Like, what, what's even the point? <laughs> and there we go. Any second, with our church now built, approval will start going up slowly, and it should stay over 50%. No problem now. So we can really focus on getting a couple more houses down. But where to put them? I guess we kind of want to build over here mostly. We do need to link up all the roads of the church so they're all connected to the roads. We'll just put a road that goes around the entire church, basically. And we could fit a house here. You know what? Let's do it. So we'll go to construction. And let's see if we can fit a house in this gap. Because there's no entrance to the church. So having it as someone's garden, you know, that could work. Yeah, we can fit it like that. And thanks to that little icon here. And it even has a garden as well. So this house will have extra space for another family and a garden. So let's build that house. A nice central house. 
What, what more could you want? I want to get at least space for, say, 10 families right now. So we can fit another four families here. But again, not big gardens, but that's okay for now. I think we do want some space for some vegetable gardens. But I think we're okay for now. Especially when with this low population, we don't need vegetables. But pretty soon we will. But once all these are built, uh, we should have space for 10 families. And they should start moving in. Because our approval is 61%. That's not too bad. Look at that. Church level is giving us a plus 7 to our approval right now. Yeah, I really like fitting houses in these like awkward shapes. That's why I like this building system so much. Because they don't need to be like a big square. You can just fit them in and they'll have like gardens, extra houses if they can fit it. Just these like awkward shaped houses. I think it like makes the towns look a lot more fuller, which I like. And there we go. That house has been built. And straight away, we're going to expand the living space. So we'll build like a space for an extra family in this one. The same as this one. I guess the extra family lives in the shed, which is it's a bit sad. Yeah. The extra family just chills in the shed. And this one can also have expanded living space. So we're going to get that built as well. I don't think any of the others do. So after they're built, I guess we'll have space for 12 families. So that should sort us out for a little bit now. Now, we actually already have 26 hides. And if we want to level up all these houses to level 2, which we do really want to because then they start paying us some regional wealth or they generate regional wealth, we need clothing. But at first level, we can just go off leather. We haven't even given them a well yet. Oh, God. These people must be so thirsty. <laughs> I guess we'll chuck the well up here then by the industrial zone. So, you know, when we start smelting stuff, they all just die of lead poisoning and stuff. That works. And all we need then is leather. So, we have enough families. So, we're going to want to go to our industry and get a tannery. They turn hides into leather. And we'll chuck it near the hunting camp. I think that works best. We'll chuck it on the other side of the trees. And then after that, we can start upgrading all these to level 2 already, which is really good. But... We are slowly going into winter. Now, early on without farms, and that, it doesn't really matter. We're not, it doesn't really make a difference to us just yet. But as soon as we get two houses to level two, we'll have another development point. And we're going to want to pick up trade logistics and then also go for better deals after that one. So the sooner we level up, the better. And all the houses have been built. Just look at this game. It looks so good. I like this village already, to be honest with you. Where it's all filled out. I want to see how these extra houses look then. Yeah, so it's just like a smaller house. They just live in a shed. Yeah, they literally just live in the shed, the other family. Seems a bit unfair for the other people, you know. Gotta wake up and just see that. But you know what? It's better, it's better than sleeping on the floor in the snow. So I assume they take it. Right, bandits are stealing a lot of us. We now have 14 men in our army. So I think it's time we start cleaning up some of these bandits. So the closest one is right here. So we're going to want to rally our men right by there. And let's get... Sorting these bandits out. We're going to have one more family work in the hunting camp. Just to start generating more meat and hides. Because look, we're barely making a dent in the wild animals. And we have one meat. For some reason, they're not really hunting very well. And then we'll have another family then in the tannery. And we'll have one family left to build. We've got 14 spearmen. We're going to turn them off run so they don't fatigue. And I think we're going to have them on Stanger Ground. And they're going to line up about here. Because they will probably start pushing towards us then. For our first battle, please don't lose too many people. Losing loads of your workforce this early on is going to be awful. They're coming towards us. They do have, they do have the hill advantage. What's their plan? Are they, are they running? No, they're just chilling towards us. Fair enough. There's 16 of them, 14 of us. We have shields. They don't. We also have spears. Our guys are absolutely hyped. Right. What we need to do is turn towards them. Because they're coming at us on a slight angle. Let's make sure we're facing them. And let's go. We're playing quite defensive. But with, uh, you know, spears and shields, I think that works best. How's this guy alive? Oh, come on. Start killing them. Yeah, we, we got this. Oh, they do have shields all of a sudden. I did not notice that on them earlier. I, I want to witness the first death. Where's it going to be? I reckon this guy with the pink hood, he's dead. Yeah, my guy is absolutely destroying him. Come on. Wait, someone's already died. Oh, I, I'm assuming right by here. Just loads of blood on the floor. Come on, kill him. You better not survive and run away. Yeah, they're down to 11. We still have... Oh, they're down to 10 now, and we have 40. Ooh! Just, just buried him right there. Oh, and him. Buried. Go on. Go on. 3v1. No! He actually got away. He actually lived. But we lost nobody. So we're going to take this hunting camp, and we're going to send this wealth to the nearest town. And I think we're going to go ahead and try and clean up the rest of these bandit camps to stop them stealing our stuff. Problem with doing that is... That's 14 men who are currently, you know, not working our woodcutters, our fuel 
uh, you know, everything, our hunters. But it's got to be done. And the regional wealth is really nice. Oh, and the tannery is built, so we can start making some leather now. And then once that's done, we should have no problem upgrading practically all our houses to level 2. And new families are moving in. But where are these enemies then? They're not pushing up towards us. Are they even there? But this bandit camp's empty. But if they're gone, I, mean, I can't complain. We're just going to send all those resources to the nearest town. And there's another one up here as well. Is this one empty? No, this one actually has people in it. So we will have a fight for this one. And one thing I've recently just worked out, if you hold tab, you can actually see like an overview of all your stuff. So I think these people want clothes. Yeah, they don't have clothes. This family wants a bit more food. And then it will tell you when you can actually upgrade them to the next tier house. It's just a nice easy way to work that out because before I would just click on every house. <laughs> you know, this time we're going to have them on push forward. Be a bit aggressive. Face them and let's go. Rip their heads off. All right, calm down. You know, I'm with these guys now. Oh, they're sprinting. Oh, God. Oh, they, they didn't even move my front line. Oh, God, this guy is... He's not looking so good. Okay, we're all covered in blood already. So maybe that, that charge was a bit more effective than I thought. Is this the same guy? But if he survives this one as well, I'm not going to be happy. Oh, we just lost someone. We're down to 13. It's 13 each. Oh, they're down to 11 now. We should still win. Pink Hood is messing... Oh, he just died. Okay, we just watched him get slaughtered. Thank God. And there we go. So we lost one person, which is not bad considering we did clear three bandit camps, although one of them, you know, was empty. Oh, we're, we're still taking the victory. And this time we're going to send the wealth to my own treasury, mainly so we can start building a little bit of wealth. And then when we get our mana down, we can start upgrading our retinue straight away. But these guys have 600 regional wealth, so they're doing quite good for themselves. And I'm thinking it may be time to try the charcoal burner. Never used it before, but it would double our fuel efficiency. At the cost of an extra family working it. I think that's worth it, to be honest. Uh, where is it? Industry, I assume. No, gathering. Gathering. Charcoal. Oh, there we go. You know, we don't want it too close to our houses. We'll chuck it up in the trees for you. And we'll connect it off our woodcutter. Just like that. So once that's built, I guess the firewood shouldn't go to the market. It should go straight to here. And then the charcoal goes to the market. Where's our hitching post? Is it left out here? Yeah, it is. I'm going to order another ox. We have a little bit of money and... We should probably put another hitching post kind of closer to, you know, our industry stuff. So we'll chuck it on the road over here. But now we'll have two oxes. That should make construction way more efficient. Oh, one house can upgrade. So we're going to get that to level two. The rest of the problems is clothing. I may get a second family on the tannery because they're they are not making leather fast enough. And we do really need to start upgrading our houses now. One thing we could also do with some of our regional wealth is if we chuck some goat sheds down so we have two goat sheds and what they do is they just passively give us hides so i think getting some of them down as well just to make sure we have enough hides that will be useful now to make leather but later on that will be really useful to make shoes we can sell and other types of clothes there we go where have they been spotted i don't know but let's just get our army raised and ready we'll keep an eye out see where they come from is that them come on just give us one stack yeah the first raid dead i think is always just one stack i guess oh where are they going? Oh, and the other ruler's army is pushing towards them as well. So these guys are not wanted by anybody. <laughs> but let's get our army and we're going to move them up here. We need to stop them getting to our village. If they get to our village, they will just start burning down all our buildings. Trust me, I've been there and it's not fun. And I think defensively, we just win without losing anybody. They are pushing towards us. Can they like stay out of our land, please? Yeah, look at that. Just like that. No problem defeating our first raid. And I guess these guys now are going to go and clean up the bandit camps. So that's nice. I don't have to do them all. You know what? I appreciate that. Let's just hope he doesn't fight me anytime soon. That, that wouldn't be fun because his army is so much more powerful than mine. 236 stacks of bows. Like, what? We would get absolutely decimated. And if we take a look now, that little green house icon means that house can be upgraded to level 2. So pretty much all our houses. Well, no, all of them. There we go. Our first tier 2 house is already built right there. It doesn't look too different from the tier 1s. They just have like extra beams and they're a slightly different color, I think. And then tier threes are the ones that look proper nice. But we're not getting tier three anytime soon, I don't think. Although hopefully though, because that would help us a lot. Because tier three plots, they actually support another family. So we wouldn't have to build so many houses. So the quicker we get tier three, the better. Settlement level increased. So we have reached medium village. And to get large village, 
We need 10 tier 1s and 5 tier 2s. I mean, we're about to get all the tier 2s. We just need a couple more houses, basically. But we're going to go ahead and pick up trade logistics, although we're not going to use it just yet. Pretty soon, though, we will go ahead and get that trading post down. And there we have it. So we're not a big village, but we can fit 12 families. We have 12 families and... Every single house is now plot level two. So we do need to start expanding. We have 70% approval and we're full. So I want to build some houses kind of on this side of town. We're going to connect this road to this road like that. If we put a road going this way. So I want to get some longer plots, like some longer houses. I don't want them too close to the center. This is quite central. So... We'll just build an extra road like that. It's not super useful yet, but it goes through the trees. And then what we're going to want to do is get a couple of houses that are kind of long, maybe here. So yeah, I think like that. They might look a bit stupid at the start, but once they haul our vegetable gardens in there and stuff, they'll start producing a decent chunk of vegetables for us. So hopefully families move in there quite quick and they get built quite fast. And you know what? It's probably time we start thinking about some trade. So this is the King's Road. This big one going through the middle. So we have a trading post, but where do we want to put it? Maybe sort of over here? Could have it next to these houses. Yes, yeah, so you know what? We're going to have it right in the middle of these trees right here. I think it needs to be on the King's Road, although I'm not too sure. But I'm sure that makes it more efficient anyway, so it's probably not a bad idea. Now, something I didn't use in my last video was livestock trading. So that would help with getting sheep and stuff. But I don't think we need that just yet. But a trading post will be very useful because... We're going to need tavern supplies. So we do need ale. And I don't think it's worth growing the stuff for ale. So instead, I think we're going to import the barley. We'll then use a malt house to turn the barley into malt. And then we'll have to specialize some houses to breweries. And then they can turn the malt into ale for our tavern supply. So I think that's probably the way we'll go. The lands are stricken by a drought. Okay, so that's why it was looking funny. I was wondering what was going on. And one of our houses was just finished building. So... We have reached the large village. So we are going to go ahead and pick up better deals. So now trading's, you know, actually efficient. Because otherwise, it's just pointless trading because you're going to be wasting so much regional wealth. And I think trading is so powerful in this game, to be honest. Like, I think you can just forget about farming if you really wanted to and instead just go the trading route. Although we are going to build some farms for food, but other things we're just going to pay for. There we go. So all these houses are built... Someone has moved in one of them. The rest of them are still empty. But for all of these, I'm actually going to turn them all into vegetable gardens. That should give us a nice chunk of vegetables and keep our people happy. So we're going to do that. They're going to be our little farming families. And I'm going to start preparing for our tavern. So I'm going to get a malt house down. Do we want it kind of central? Could have some work in our town, right? It doesn't have to just be houses. So I think let's get an extra road going right next to these houses. For some reason, I can't, like, actually get it to go straight. There we go. Managed it in the end. And we're going to have our malt house kind of right here. Kind of central, but I want some work in the middle of our town. So it's not completely separate. Our stuff like logging camps and stuff, they can be out of the way a bit. That's fine. So yeah, I'm excited to see, once all these houses are full, how many vegetables they're going to be producing. It should be a decent amount. And that does mean we are going to have to start a trade route. So we're going to get one family working in the trading post. And if we go to crops, we are going to start a trade route for barley. That costs us 12 regional wealth. And we're going to import, try and keep a surplus of 40. So it's going to be very expensive. But the other options are just straight up importing ale. That's going to cost us 8 per 1 ale. Or we could also import malt itself. And that costs us 4. But the further we go back, I guess the more efficient it's going to be. And the malt house is built. So we're going to get one family working in the malt house. And it is probably time we build our tavern. And I want the tavern right in front of the market. You know, right central. Although what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a road coming off the marketplace. Rather than it right, like, facing the market, I'm going to have it like that. So it's on this road be here. But I want it kind of central. You know, it's a tavern. You need it in the middle. So everyone can get their drink. And hopefully soon a trader comes for that malt. And that would actually get us pretty close to tier 3 houses. But we do need some more different types of clothing. And we have 86 leather. So I think the first house we built, which I believe was this one. We're going to turn them into cobblers. So they will start using that leather just to make shoes. And that will fill out all these houses. First tier need for clothes, which is leather. And the second tier for shoes. 
And the only thing holding us back from tier three houses will be our church. But for that, we do need some clay roof tiles and stuff. And we've got a deposit of two, oh, that's iron. Our clay is up here and it's 219. So we could import clay rather than working it because it's kind of out of the way. So maybe we do import clay. We could import roof tiles themselves. I want to see the pricing. So clay would cost us one. That's so cheap. And roof tiles are eight. Yeah. What we're going to start is a trade route for clay, import it, and just have a surplus of 20. Yeah, well, we'll keep a surplus of 20. We're not going to make the roof tiles yet, but at least it's ready. As soon as we want them roof tiles, we can just get um, a clay furnace down, ready to start doing that. And I think... We are going to want to start mining this stone, though. Which stone is needed to make the clay furnace. We need five stone. We could import it, but eh, it's only right by there. It's not too far away like the clay. So we're going to get a road off the main road. Or we could actually build a road from this through the forest. Just like that. So rather than going off the king's road. And then we could uh, go ahead and get our mine down near it. Our stone cutters camp right by there. So once that's built, we'll just start harvesting some of the stone. Because going forward, we're going to need a lot of clay roof tiles and a decent amount of stone. Mainly for this church as well. And I believe, there we go, we have had our first import of barley. So that should be going to our malt house to make malt. And now we do need a brewery. So we're going to get a house built right behind. here. And this will be our little brewery next to the tavern. Right now, we have 75 planks. We could start selling them, although I might actually keep the surplus. Because some of these tier 2 houses, what I'm going to do is... We're going to start getting somebody to make war bows for us and some shields. Rather than importing them and wasting the money, we can just get people to make them for us. And then we can start getting more militias down. Because right now we only have one of 17, which is not great. And if we get raided, which it is on the highest frequency, we could be in trouble. So actually, you know what? Uh, you over here, you could start making us some bows. And this is now tier 2, so we're also going to turn this now into our brewery. So we'll have bows being made. So we're going to make a second regiment and we're going to go with Archer Militia. And of course, right now, equipment missing. But as soon as they start making some bows, that will be sorted for us. And then any surplus, we'll just start selling ourselves. And we already have the clay trade route done. So we should already have 20 of it if we look. Yep, there we go. 20 clay already here. And we already have 14 stones. So you know what? It is time for our clay furnace. And we are going to chuck it up on this side of things. So we'll get that down right about there. Well, that guy makes bows very fast. We're already up to 19 on our bows. We're missing recruits. How many bows do we have? So we have two spare already. So yeah, he makes them very fast. That's good. And our cobbler, how, how well is he doing? We have 38 shoes. So everybody should pretty much have both of their clothes install needs met. And somebody has just recently moved into our brewery. So they should start making ale pretty soon. And then all their tavern supply will be met. So the only thing we'll be missing is that church level. And a band of raiders has been seen. I don't know where, but luckily enough, did just get that archer militia built. So where are they coming from? Oh no. I believe it's only one, but they came from the other side that I was expecting. So they are going to start burning my, hou my houses down, my farms. Oh, we're not going to get there in time. Oh, that's so unlucky. Come on, you need to run. You need to be running. You need to be fast. Because these guys are just going to have free reign on all these houses. They are walking, which is nice. Let's just hope we can minimize the damage here. Come on, leave these houses alone. Please. Oh, my army's here already. Huge. Right. Spear militia. Push forward. Attack. We're going to have our bows just line up right here on the side. We might... Yes. So we've somehow managed to stop them burning anything. We're going to get our spears to angle this way. Hopefully get their attention. Are they just running up my bows? Yes, they are. Right, you need to start shooting. So we're going to put them on shoot at will. and makes them more efficient at close range. Yeah, this is working. You know, that was that was so lucky. I'm so, we're so early on. It's only one regiment still attacking us. But later on, it's going to be a lot more. <laughs> but that could have gone so much worse. There we go. Close one. Oh, and I forgot to put a family working in the tavern. So... Because we do have... Yeah, we have eight ales. So the ale is being made now. We're importing the malt. We're importing the barley. The barley goes to the malt house. And then the malt goes to the brewery, which goes to the tavern. So we have the whole train set up. And uh, we're out of housing space. We're doing good for food. Six months supply. So probably not a bad idea to start getting a couple more houses down. 
We'll chuck a house next to the malt house. And uh, you know what? We'll see if we can squeeze another one in. But here, I don't know if we will. No, a plot too small. I don't think we can actually squeeze a house in there, which is a shame. Well, actually, if we do that, and they even have a small back garden for like a little construction bit. So that's good. So yeah, I'm just going to try and fill out, fill out the little town for now, to be honest. To see where we can squeeze houses and stuff. We'll probably get another house here. This will probably be another brewery later on. Because I imagine we're probably going to want more than one. So we can fit two houses there. Or, yes, yeah, so we can fit two houses there. And one of them will have a workshop space. So we can get a brewery set up on either side of the tavern. I think that would be useful. And we may as well squeeze a couple more houses be here as well. We can get one more there. So that should sort us out for a little bit longer. And, I mean, pretty soon, we're going to be good to start getting those tier 3s down. Bodies need burial. Oh, no. We need a hollowed ground because, uh, yeah, we had raiders in our land. So we actually need to get rid of their bodies. So if we go to, I think it's residential. Yeah, we need a corpse pit. So not all deserve to be buried on consecrated ground. Use this building to get rid of any raiders' corpses quickly. The workers become grave diggers. So where do we want to bury them? Do I reckon just out the way. We could bury them just in the forest. We just have a grave. Yes. Just a way up here in the forest. <laughs> A little grey for the people we don't like. Because, yeah, we have nine bodies just lying about. Where are they? I don't even know where. Are they still there? Do we actually see them? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I guess we don't need them anymore? Or do they just instantly teleport when it's finished building? I don't know. They're just gone. Fair enough. I think they rotted away. Maybe we don't need a corpse pit then. And our clay furnace is built. So we'll get some... we just one family working on it. We don't need it super fast, so it's not too important. Okay, now we get the fun of testing our bows on our first bandit camp. So we're going to line our spears up there. And we're going to take the bows a bit further back. And hopefully this will get the bandits to focus our spears. And we'll just get our spears to play defensively. Because I imagine our bows are going to... Are they? I think they're actually coded to target your bows. Yeah, they are. But I think they're going to get melted. Well, okay, never mind. Our spears have to charge. Oh, they fully charged as well. So that should hopefully get their attention and our bows can just go on fire at will. And yeah, they are absolutely sandwiched in between us. Ooh, the bows are brutal. It's just absolutely destroying their line. you are like three people then. Yeah, they're done. So that made that way easier for us. Bows, very nice. Who would have thought? But with this bandit camp, I think we'll send some money back to our town because we're spending a lot of money bringing in barley. And a bit of clay and stuff. So just making sure they can keep affording that's going to be very important for us. And look at that. Our wealth is now back up to 700. Mainly because we're selling these war bows. We're selling these shoes. So that is getting us a decent chunk of money. Now, we have 57 war bows. I mean, they're not selling fast enough. We might just wait until we have about 100. And then what we can do is go into our Fletcher's shop and pause the building. That will stop them making any more so we don't waste too many planks because they don't all just sell straight away. It does take a while for things to actually sell. So we'll get a surplus of about 100 and then we'll pause it because we still need a couple more for our actual Archer Militia. But right now, what we're doing, all those new houses we built, we're going to upgrade every house to level 2. And then what we're going to do... We're not going to build any more houses for now. We're going to get every single house we have up to tier 3, hopefully. And then once that is sorted out, we will have a decent supply chain of all their needs. And then we can start expanding. But let's just fit as many houses here as we can. I mean, right now we've got 25 space. So when they all go to tier 3, they all get an extra family. So it'll be around 50 families we can support just here. Which is, you know, pretty efficient when you look at the plot space we have. And how much land we're only using already. But yeah, later on, we'll probably start building over here. Maybe get farming. We should check the fertility. So if we check for our wheat, yeah, only be here is kind of bad. Up here is mostly good as well. We could go this way or we could go down here. So then they have access to a main road as well. But we could go up here, but that's kind of far away. So yeah, I think, you know what? We might do some farming in this area over the road, but we'll see. You know, we'll take it one step at a time. Our main focus right now is just getting every house we have up to tier three. It's all that matters. Look at that, up to 900 now. We are doing so good on trade. That, that which is really, really important because I got another 32. Whatever we're selling is selling quite fast now. And some of my houses ain't getting enough of a second, like, group of food. We have a lot of berries. We have some vegetables and some meat. So I think, for now, I think it might be worth going in here, maybe importing a third type of food. We can get eggs quite easily. Apples we can't, but they're kind of expensive. Eggs are only two. And we're going to be making a lot of vegetables once they actually come to harvest. So you know what? I'm going to start 
just for now, import a surplus of 30 eggs. You know what? We'll go up to 40 eggs. And then later on, we will get some chicken coops. And then we won't need to do this. But for now, it's probably worth it. We just got plus 200 from some sale there. Oh, yeah. Somebody just bought loads of bows. Nice. Okay. So if we look at our town now, we have every single house other than this one to tier two because they're just not getting a second type of food still for some reason. But all these other houses, if we drop down and have a look around our town, they're all tier two. Got a market in the middle. Got a little tavern. We got a brewery, a church. So our town is coming along very nicely so far. But. Now it's time to do what I was saying. Before we build any more houses, it is time to start getting some tier three houses. And if we look at all of them, they're all missing one thing mostly. The next level church. And as soon as we get 10 planks, we can build that because let's see how many roof tiles we have. We have 22 roof tiles and we have 109 stone from our mining pit. So we're just gonna wait for five more planks, which should happen any second now. Oh, and this plot can now actually be upgraded to tier two. So there we go. Every single house is now tier two. And we're down to two planks. What we're going to do then is go to our Fletchers and stop them making bows. Just for the time being, so we can actually, you know, use our planks to build with. You know, probably quite important. There we go. So we now have enough planks to build the small stone church. And then we're going to unpause our Fletcher shop so they can keep making bows for us to sell. And now what I also want is I want a joiner's workshop. So we're going to use four more planks and turn this place here into our joiner's workshop. And then they can start producing some shields. And we're going to go over here and we're going to start a trade uh, for some spears. So we're going to import spears until we have a surplus of five. Let's just do that. Because if we look at our army, we have 25 people who could be in our spear militia. But we only have 17 spears. So we can import them and then get our joiner to make us the large shields that we need. There we go. And our joiner's shop is built. So we're going to make sure they are set on large shields. And we can start selling our surplus on that as well. So if we just start a trade route for large shields, we're going to export any over a surplus of, say, five. So that's more income we can start having. And yeah, we are just going to start stocking up money soon, which is huge. And just like that, our small stone church has been built. And it is being very loud. So that's great. <laughs> But, I mean, if we look at our houses now, even the ones furthest away, yeah, every single house we have has all their requirements met to be upgraded to tier 3. All we need now is planks. So, we are going to stop our joiner and we're also going to stop our fletcher. Make sure we have two families working in the saw pit and we just need loads of planks and we also do need clay tiles. And if we check... We have 29 roof tiles, so that's okay. It takes four per one. So, this is our plan now. Get everything upgraded to tier three. But, I do think it is now time to probably start planning out our farms. Because we do have 10 months of food. We could just import the grain, but I don't want to import everything, right? I actually do want to have some farms and stuff. So, I think let's have a look. If we go to our farming... Now, Emma is the main thing we need. Kind of don't want to touch this forest up here. I kind of thinking around this area. So we could do a bit of farming further down here. Like how big is if we plotted out a farm around here in the trees? That's only 1.9. I want both of mine to be around about 2.5. They're the kind of sizes I'm aiming for. And I wish we could plot more than four points. Like you can't. Like it'd be nice if I could just build a nice shape around these trees. But no, only four points and then that's it. Ooh, you know what we could do? Could have our farms just over here. We already have roads going there and everything. So let's get two farms over here, I think. We'll have one that goes along the road. And we will expand the road just a little bit. So we'll just have the road doing that. And then we'll see if we can chuck a farm on either side, maybe. So that could be one farm. That gets us a field size of 2.5. And then I guess we could chuck the other one just right next to it, maybe. And that field, which we can't build for some reason. Oh, what's this? Our hitching post. Okay. We're going to relocate this hitching post. It probably should have done it before anyway. Maybe one. See if we can fit it near the marketplace somewhere. Could have it right by there in the middle of town. And then we could just get a road connecting it. Or not. Okay, that's not ideal. Oh, well, it's got to be moved now. So I can't move it again. So, wait, are these supplies actually stopping us from building this field? I think they are. Yeah. 
I, I think we can't build a field here because of them supplies, which is a little bit annoying. Yeah, we can build it like that. It's not ideal, but I guess I'll have to do it. And then we can just replan this road out to go along the edges. That should work okay. There we go. So we have our two plots. They're both the same size. They're both 2.5. They're just awkwardly different shapes thanks to our supplies, which is not great. But you know what? It works. That does also mean we're going to need a farmhouse. I'm going to chuck that right here. And then we will need a windmill, which uh, I guess we might as well chuck out here somewhere as well. Well, that will have 100% efficiency of it here. So I guess we can chuck it out here. And then we're also going to need a communal oven. But I like the communal ovens to be more so in town. So we have this road here. So we can connect our hitching post that way, which, yeah, that, that, that'll do. And then what we'll do is we'll have our communal oven out here as well. So we'll get all that built up. We're probably not going to do farming this year. I don't think we'll really have the time for it. Like, all the population, we need these houses to be filled. All these new slots we're about to get. Because if we look, a lot of our places can now be upgraded to tier 3, thanks to our planks. But we're going to let the stock build up a little bit more. We'll focus our construction on our farming. We're probably going to want some houses over here as well, to be honest. And I think we'll get another road from our forager's hut, just connecting to this one. And we're both going to just let them fallow. And uh, you know what? We're going to let them fallow for a year until we're ready. And then we'll think about working out the rotation and stuff. Look at our approval right now. We're up to 98%. So as soon as we start upgrading to tier 3, we're going to grow very fast. I'm just a bit worried about our, our food and stuff. Like how much of a hit is it going to take? There we go. So our farmhouse, our mill, and if we check, our communal oven are now all fully built. So when we're ready, we have the whole farming setup sorted and ready to go. And you know what? We have 18 planks. So let's get in here. And start upgrading our houses to tier 3. Of course, it does absolutely rinse planks at 8 per upgrade. <laughs> so it might take a little while, but <laughs> what can we do about it, eh? And when one of these houses are built here, when they're finished, we will actually become a small town. I don't know if we get any more development points, though. I'm not too sure. We'll see. Would be nice, but I actually cannot remember at all. Yeah, the tier 3 houses are so much nicer. Oh my god, that house is huge! I think that is the biggest house I've seen in this game. Like, that is absolutely massive. Oh, yeah, we did get another development point. So let's think. Heavy plow. I just don't think it helped. It said significantly faster plowing, but I don't think it did, to be honest. So I might actually ignore that. And could go deep mining. Uh, we don't have any rich deposits. Trapping. I didn't really notice a, a difference from it, to be honest. But it could get double capacity of berries or beekeeping. Workers collect honey, and every region can sustain up to two. So it could be an extra food source for us, beekeeping. Could get somebody who can make helmets after unlocking advanced armor in and master armor in. So we can get mail and then plate armor, or we could just import that. Uh, we could also get apples from apple orchards. Until the trees are fully grown, which takes around three years, the orchards produce only a fraction. I've never done orchards before. Hmm. And if we did go for orchards, if we get another point, we could go for rye cultivation. Unlocks rye crop for fields. Similar to wheat, rye can be processed into flour, but it's more resilient. And it can be grown in places with lower fertility, although we have good fertility, so maybe that's not helpful. Don't know. Never done orchards before. You know what? Let's get some apples. I've never done it before. We may as well. Uh, we're going to focus on getting all our houses to tier 3 first, and then we'll look at orchards. We have 100% approval, so every time a house is built, it's going to fill very fast. Like we have 31 families and space for 36 currently. So if you look at our tier 3, as you can see, one out of two families. So the extra space is going to be really nice for our big town. And our income as well, because they're going to start paying tax. I mean, once they're all upgraded, then I think it's a worthy time for our mana. But until then, let's get our town sorted out. You know what? I might actually just start a trade route for planks. And we're just going to import some until we have a surplus of, say, 40. Because, yeah, we are making some, but, like, our people have the money. So, you may as well import it while the saw pit is, you know, not super fast. It will just help speed up this process of waiting for planks so we can actually upgrade. So I think it's worth it. Hopefully, a trader comes by soon. There we go. 40 planks. So, we're going to upgrade all the houses that we can. You know what? I oh, know. Roof tiles are expensive. I was going to say I'll do the same with roof tiles. We could just get someone else working the clay furnace to speed it up a little bit. And there we go. We just went... The church bell is always ringing. Can I turn it off? Like, it's always ringing. But we just passed 100 population, making this 
a tenth of the way there. Yeah. But I think once it's all tier three and we have our farm set up, we can just put a bunch of houses and sustain it. So I'm not too worried. I think things are going to start speeding up dramatically now. Hopefully. Let's, and we'll look at the town like this. And right now we are getting 200 FPS. So I'm going to do the exact same thing if I remember when we have a thousand population. And I want to see the difference because I kind of want to see how it runs. Like if we are right in the middle of town as well, look around market, we're getting still 200. So it hasn't changed. That's one of the things I want to test. It's just, does it get so much worse? And our settlement level just increased now to a medium town. So we do have another point. We have the orchards now. Irrigation could be nice. So our farms ain't as damaged by drought. Beekeeping. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to go with beekeeping. Although we have one more development point after this one then. So we could go and get advanced armor in. We could import some iron. We could have some people making us some armor. That might not be a bad choice. Or we could go for beekeeping and then advanced beekeeping. And we collect wax. How much does wax sell for? It is a commodity, so I think... I don't know if it, like, helps our people, but... Candles sell for six per. And it would kind of be free for us, right? Compared to the iron working. But let's have a look. If we go to trade and military, mail armor sells for eight per and helmets six. We're not going to have enough points to get plate armor, though. You know what? Let's pick up basic armor. We're not going to do it just yet. But yeah, you know what? Let's start getting some armor in done. We'll have to import some iron though, I assume. But then think of, the, think of the sales we can make on that. So to build an orchard, it costs 50 regional wealth. And it doesn't say anything about the size like it does with vegetable gardens. So I guess let's try and get a couple of those down. We'll see if we can specialize three houses to the orchardries for us. So we'll get that one, that one there. And how about you? So we have three orchards now and they harvest in September, but... It's going to take around three years until they're fully growing. So getting them done now is probably, a, you know, a smart choice. So if we take a quick look at our little town now, every house other than this one, who for some reason thinks they're starving, and this house here that I can't click on, no idea why, but every other house is now tier three. So our town is looking nice. The house is a bit broken, but we'll ignore that one. Everywhere else, you know, looking nice and rich. We're a good little rich town. We're not, we're not very big yet. But now it's time to start some farming. So what I'm going to do, I am going to construct a couple more houses, mainly for my farmers. I'll leave those trees. I think we'll put the houses, we'll add a road like, uh, we could, I don't want to mess around with that mill. So where do we want the houses though? Up here is quite far away. I did kind of want them here. So we're going to do that. So we've built a road around all of those trees. And then on this road, I think we'll just chuck a couple more houses down. And then once we've got the farm going, what you can do is if you click on a house, you can actually force people to work in certain jobs. So that's nine houses. That gives us enough people to work over here to fill the farmhouse. If we check that is six. Oh no, that's eight. So we can have eight families in the farmhouse and just one in the windmill. That should be enough. So that should sort out all the jobs up here. And then next year, what we're going to do is... Which one has higher fertility? 59 and 60. So the second year, which will be next year, we'll have that one on wheat. And then we'll have wheat on the third year for this other field. I might add a quick little route through here if we can go through without destroying too many trees. That would be nice. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Because yeah, we are down... We've still got nine months of food. We're doing really well for food. Fuel is kind of lagging behind a little bit, but I'm not worried about that, to be honest. And we got these people just still pretending they're starving. But even our, look at our tier three houses in the center of town. They have every single requirement checked off. I'm wondering, do we start making some helmets? Because pretty soon we will have a large town. So we will be able to start making mail as well. So is there a house in town? Well, that one can be upgraded to tier three. So we'll do that. This house here is not specialized. So we could make it into a armorer's workshop. Enables the production of helmets. Then... After we unlock advanced, we'll also just do mail armor. So you know what? Let's go an armorer's workshop. We'll just do one. And we'll see how that turns out. Oh, and this house can be upgraded to tier three. So officially, this whole town is tier three. I, I'm not, I'm counting this one as tier three. Even though I can't click on it, it will upgrade. So here we go. A nice little town. There we go. Our armorer's shop is done. So let's see. It needs iron slabs. So how much are they to import? I wonder. Four. And then we can turn it into helmets, which sell for six. Or we could go one step 
for four and maybe just get iron ore for three. That's only saving one, one regional wealth. So is that worth it? Because what we can do, we could have one family whose entire job is to work in the bloomery and they turn ore into slabs. You know what? I guess over time that probably would save us a decent chunk of money. So we may as well. We'll have one family in our bloomery. I might actually chuck this kind of center. I want it next to my blacksmiths. So we'll add this little extra back alley beer and then we'll chuck the bloomery just kind of in town. That's fine. And then I guess we'll start importing some iron ore then. So we're going to want to trade. We're going to want to start the trade route. And then we're going to import. I don't know. Is it one slab per helmet? I guess one ore is one slab. One slab is one helmet maybe. I don't know if there's a way to actually see though. Yeah. One slab is one helmet. So how effective is the bloomery? I guess it's one ore per slab. So every one iron we import for three will sell as a helmet for six. And then later on... We can sell it for mail armor for eight. So we can turn three regional wealth into eight. So you know what? It's worth it. So let's say we import. Let's get a surplus of 40. Let's just make sure they have loads ready to be used. And we have loads of planks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start up our Fletcher shop and also our joiner shop as well. So we'll start producing some shields again. And of course, also some war bows to be sold because our wealth is starting to go down now. We're not producing them. As we're under a thousand, but we did just probably import a lot of iron ore. If I check. Yeah, we've got 37 iron ore, which has been turned into slabs. And we're actually getting helmets now. And then those helmets will just go straight to our militia. So we have four helmets for our spears and another four for our archers. Another thing we probably want to do soon is get one of our houses. I might change this house here rather than being a chicken coop to a tailor. And they can start producing some gambesons for us as well. And for that, I believe we need linen. But we'll see. We'll let it be built first. Okay, so it's built already. Let's take a look. So we can produce clothes, which would make our people happy. Gambesons, I think, is what we'll go for. So then our actual militia can start using them. And one gambeson costs two linen. So how much is linen? Four. You know what? Let's start importing it. So we'll import, we'll go 40 again. And then what we'll do is we'll also start a trade route for gambesons. And then we're going to export any excess that's not being used over 10. So they'll all be used by our militia first. And once we run out of militia to use them, they'll just start being sold for six apiece. Probably worth it. Well, actually it's not. Because linen is costing us four. Hmm. So it will be costing us eight. So it's actually not worth it. Or we could get a weaver's workshop and import some flax. How much is flax? Two. You know what? Let's do it. So we're going to import 40 flax instead. And we're going to stop importing this. So no trade on that. And that means we're going to need a weaver's workshop. And uh, we'll chuck a weaver's workshop over here. Just like that. I mean, just get a family work in that as well. That's pretty good. Oh, so they can walk between these houses. We just can't get a road there. I guess that's okay then. They don't have to go all the way around, which is nice. But our weaver's workshop is going to be built now any second. I know they all just left. All right, then. There we go. It's been built. So we're going to get... We'll get, mm, get two families working in it. So they should automatically now just start turning our flax into linen. And then that linen should go to gambesons. Any over that we're not using will be sold now for an actual profit rather than losing us money. So it's lucky I noticed that. So that whole production chain is set up and ready to go. What I'm also going to do... I'm going to get a second brewery because if we look, we just never have enough ale. Right now we're down to zero, but we have loads of malt. We have loads of barley. So it's just not being turned from malt to ale fast enough for us. But just like that, we have a full stack of spear militia and archer militia. And um, we're making war bows. Oh my God, another full stack. <laughs> so we have now two full archer militias and a spear militia. Now, the reason I'm doing that, we will probably start importing some sidearms soon. And then that means we could go ahead and get some militia footmen. But for now, we'll just have two stacks of archers. And our settlement level increased. So we've now reached the maximum settlement level with just 165 people. So we still have a lot to do. But we can go ahead and do advanced armor in. And now check out our armorer's shop. So... We'll still do helmets for now until all our people have helmets. But later on, we could do some male armor. 
So at least we have the option there for later. Yeah, we even have enough supply to start upgrading some of these houses to tier 3 all the way over here as well. So these farmers are going to be living a nice quiet life. I want to see what it looks like from over here. I want to see if I can actually see my main town. Oh god, that road is steep. Can we, can we make the pilgrimage up the hill? It's heavier than it looks. Out, you're carrying a hoe or spade or something. Yeah, look at that. You can actually see our main town. We can see our church, all the houses. You know what? This would be a nice place for our manor. I think that, that might... You know what? Yeah. Oh, ooh. yes. Our manor. It is, I, I did kind of want it near central town. But I think kind of out the way on this hill overlooking our town from here. I think that would look so good. Pretty soon we're going to do that. And if we look now, all of our units have 36 helmets. The gambesons are slowly being made. But any helmet we make now will go on the market to be sold. We need to get a route for it. And then we're going to export any excess. We'll keep 10. So once we make our next unit, 10 of them will instantly have helmets. But we'll sell the rest of them for a little quick profit now. Because we are down to 500. So we do need to start selling stuff before we run out of money for our malt. And for our iron ore. And for our yarn. For our gambesons, right? We need to make sure we're always having money coming in. But what is going on? Another raid. Okay, how many? Four. Hmm. We have two stacks of bowmen though. I think we're okay. And I guess we'll probably fight around the same area in front of our farms actually i might go and fight in our neighbor's land a little bit more open here for our bows i think this will work better and then hopefully our bows can get a little bit of range they don't reach very far do they so we kind of want them a little bit closer maybe like that a bit more bunched up but they do have a little bit more range but what we could do is get our bows out in front just to start landing some long shots and then when they get closer we can retreat them behind so we should start getting a couple of shots on them before they can get to us. Oh, where are they going? Okay. <laughs> They're a bit lost in the trees. They're taking their time. Right, we're going to slow it right down now. Hopefully, they can get a couple of kills. And then you are going to rush. These guys need to rush forward while these now back up. Quicker, quicker, quicker. Nice. They only got us one kill, though, which is probably not great. We need. I think we need more infantry because this is brutal. Are these guys even shooting? No. Uh, these guys need to start flanking around. And I think you guys as well should probably look to get a flank on like that. Don't go through them. Right. Let's see how this goes. Now we've got our bows on them all with angles on them all. Come on, spears. They should hold. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, they uh, they stood no chance. There we go. Yeah, I think we do need, we, we need some more infantry right now. Because uh, I think we could have done that without losing anybody if we had the infantry. But it wasn't too bad. I think all of these houses actually have people living in them we can't upgrade this one though because i can't click on it that's great but the rest of you we're gonna start getting these people to go work in the farmhouse so there we go we now have six families working in the farmhouse and we've got a couple more people who can move in over here three more families i wish i could upgrade this one but i can't and then once those three more families are moved in we'll have the farmhouse full and a family working in the windmill oh and someone just moved in I just want to say again, also, thank you for everybody who's watching these Manor Lord videos. Somehow, my Manor Lord's video went out yesterday, and for the first, like, well, till I went to bed, until the morning, it was like 9 out of 10, which if you don't know, for those who care, when you put a YouTube video out, it gets ranked out of your last 10. So it was 9 out of 10, which, is, which makes sense. It's not Crusader Kings 3. And I just went downstairs to make a cup of tea and checked it. Somehow, it's now a 1. I don't know what is going on. But honestly, thank you all so much. I assume these videos won't do as well because it's not like the initial hype. But I appreciate all of you who are putting up with me until you get Manor Lords yourself. <laughs> I do appreciate it a lot. Yeah, I think this is going to be a two-part series. I think that's just how it's going to have to go. Because I don't want the videos to be too long. But also, I don't like to cut too much out. So, it will be in two parts. This will probably go out on the Sunday. Part two should be out on the Monday. So, you're not waiting long. But I think the videos are easier to watch that way. But yeah, I also want to ask any challenges you want to see me do. I mean, I want to keep playing this game, right? Maybe after we get a thousand, if enough of you want, we could continue this settlement. Or we could try another challenge. Like, there's some achievements in the game. Like, I think it's like one of like mercenaries only and stuff like that. But yeah, please let me know in the comments any other challenges you would like to see me try. Because I am interested. I like this game a lot. And there we go. Enough families have moved in over here. So now our farmhouse is full. So it has the max amount of people. In this playthrough, we're not going to be able to unlock the plowing stations. So let's hope that doesn't cost us. Uh, they are starting to plow the field. Which is probably not helpful because we are... About to go into winter. Where is he claiming? That's not my land, is it? No. So the other ruler is claiming... Which bit? 
This place down here. Okay, I'll let him have it for now. And just hope he doesn't attack me anytime soon. But pretty soon, once our farm is set up and once our manor is built, we are then going to start getting in loads of supplies for some more units. We need to get quite a big militia. Yeah, I genuinely think this is quicker than having the ox. Because with the ox, these won't actually plow the field. They'll just leave it to the ox. So I actually think having the ox is slowing it down. And it's doing that thing again where it doesn't actually fill out the whole field, sadly. So it doesn't have this bit ungrowing, I think. Yeah, now they're starting to plant in October. But I think it is time for our manor. Now, it would make sense to have it here, like near the town. But you know what? We're, we're the lord of House Snap. And I say we want the manor up on a hill. So... Our road. We're going to connect it off this road be here, I think. And we'll have the road do this. And we should have enough materials for our manor. Yeah. So let's chuck the manor. We want it facing outwards. We'll have it. You know what? I want it further. I want it closer to the edge. So we'll have it like that. Facing over the hill. And now for the rest of this, we have quite a lot of supplies. So... Walls and gate. We also have the outer tower. This provides 10 garrison space. Garrison units and villagers will shoot projectiles at approaching enemies. Garrison tower. This increases the maximum retinue size by 12. This is limited to one per region. And there's also the tax office. But right now, that doesn't actually work. So we're going to have the outer... We're going to have the garrison tower for our bigger retinue. Connected to our manor. Walls and gate. Uh, I don't think we need walls facing this way. Like towards the end. But we'll have some like this. Too far away from other modules. Hmm. So we need actually some outer towers. Don't need it to be massive, right? We'll have tower by this path. Uh, we'll keep that path. Maybe we'll have some ha more houses up here later or something. So we'll leave that path for now. So we'll have another tower right here. We'll chuck... We'll just have towers going around in sort of like a circle shape. So now what we want is the walls and gates. So can we connect these to our towers? I don't really know how this fully works. I haven't actually built a big tower before. But we'll have we'll have a gap here so we can see out of it. And then I guess we'll have the towers on the outside. And we'll have a gate there connected to that tower. And then we'll have the gate end right there like that. So I think that's everything we want. Oh, we need more. Oh, we can't really afford it. We need more planks and more timber. Damn. Yeah, it's quite expensive. I want to get some of them built. We can always build the rest of them later. The towers towers don't actually cost anything. It's this, it's this wall. Wait, now it's saying it's 55. I don't know what's going on. Right, we're just going to get the manor built on its own. And then we can do the rest of it later. Make it look pretty. But let's get the manor built, I guess. That's probably a good start. But we'll try and make it look nice later, hopefully. Oh, and we now have a surplus of 70 helmets. So they are not selling fast enough. So what we're going to do now is we'll get our armorer to start making some mail armor. How many iron slabs do we have? None. Oh yeah, of course, because they're being used for the helmets. But we'll start making some mail armor instead because we're still making gambesons. It's coming along slowly. They all have helmets. So I guess mail armor is the next thing they need. And then we can start selling the surplus of that. So just so we don't forget, we will get a trade route set up for export once we have a surplus of 10. And one thing I am doing now is I am importing some sidearms so we can start building a militia footman. They have almost a maximum on a helmet. And of course, we are making some chain armor now as well. So our units are going to be strong, which is really, really good for us. But the crop's still growing. So do they still grow through winter just really slowly? So maybe we'll have some wheat this year, maybe. We'll see. But we have so many roof tiles. And we can probably... Um, well, how much is clay? Because we are... Oh, clay is one, isn't it? So we could start selling these roof tiles for eight each. I mean, yeah. Uh, export. We'll just keep a surplus of... We'll aim for 100. It probably won't sell out that fast, but that can start making us loads of money. It's lucky I just realized because uh, that's just loads of money sat there doing nothing for us. Oh, and as our manor has been built, we now have our first policy. Uh, hunting grounds, it makes farms worse. So we're going to go with strict fasting. This makes citizens skip every fifth meal. There we go. And now our manor has been built. We do have our retinue. What I'm going to do is open the castle planner. And we're going to see if we can afford the garrison tower. That will increase our retinue to 24. And then once that's built, uh, we're, we're going to start paying for our, our retinue to be upgraded and see what we can do with them. They, they're going to be our main force. 24 retinue is strong. And if we look, we're actually full on housing space again. So uh, we need more houses. So I'm going to see if there's any slots in our main plot. We can fit a couple more houses. Over here would be nice, I think. Two houses right there. Let's see if there's any gaps. I don't think there really is. 
We've done quite well filling the space. We'll have a couple of houses facing the church as well, just like... We'll have them like... Uh, like that. That'll do. And we may as well get... I mean, a row of houses here, is it? Like a nice, decent row. Bring it out a little bit more so they can all be specialized. Yeah, I think like that. Like, we're not building in loads of rows, but on the outskirts of town, but there, I think that'll look quite nice. I think we should see if we can develop this town here to have 400 population. And then once this reaches 400, then maybe we get like a town in the forest. I think that would look quite cool. Or maybe up here. Because I do want to start like two towns in the same region. That's, that's the goal anyway. You know what? Let's maybe start importing some food. Maybe some meat. Import meat. We'll start a trade route. And we'll try and keep a surplus of 50 meat. And maybe some honey. Yeah, we, we, we don't have any honey right now. So we'll get 50 honey as well. So we're constantly, of course, it's going to be expensive at the start buying the initial 50. But after that, we'll just keep it stocked up, you know? That'll also make our people very happy as well. And in some of these houses, I want to get some more tailors. So then we can start making some actual clothes to sell. For that, we will need a dye workshop thing. So we'll check the dyer's workshop right next to the forager's hut because they do use the berries to actually make the dye. And then one of these houses down here will make into a tailor, start making some clothes and stuff. We need more stuff to start selling to make sure our wealth is constantly going up. Even now when we got to buy some food. Nice, so our tower's been built on our manor. So we have a retinue size of 24. So if we go to customize them, we'll... Buy as many as we can, which is 14. So we need a couple more bandit camps. And then we can get 24. And then we'll pay the money to actually upgrade all the armor once we have them all maxed out. And I'll probably wait until we have 24. And what I'll do is I'll customize them all to look the same as well. We'll probably go with a nice purple if we can to match our coat of arms. And because our approval's so high, uh, I think I'm going to start taxing my people. Because we do need the money for our retinue. So we'll just put a 10% tax on. Not 100%. 10% tax. And then we'll see how much money that actually starts generating. Right now we have 49. So we'll see. You know what, we're going through this food quite fast. You know what, I'm going to increase the surplus for all of our food that we're importing. So we're going to go to 80 on all of them. You know, make our people happy. And look at that, we have 84 vegetables and 60 apples. And all of that is just from growing them ourselves. So that's pretty good. And once this bread starts being made, which it should be being made, right? We have 154 wheat. Which will then start going into flour in our windmill. And the flour will be transported to our communal oven over here in town. So we get we get, three, we get two families in the communal oven, I think. So pretty soon they'll have every type of food available to them. That's pretty good. That should make them all quite happy, hopefully. So if we hover over all of these, you can see food variety, 57%. And you can see what all of them have actual access to. So I think the higher surplus will fix all those problems. Because we're taxing them now as well. We do want to keep the approval as high as we can. Look at that. 302 gold. So every time we get money, we'll just keep increasing these. And we need four more. And then after all, they're maxed out. I mean, we can probably stop taxing them, to be honest with you. You know, I'm actually going to have every food set to import until it reaches 80. And then that way, in the, in the summer months, when we have loads of berries, we're not going to be importing any. When we have loads of bread that's just been made, we're not going to be importing any. Same with vegetables, but then for the rest of the year, once they're not actually on the market through our actual creation, they'll still be there for our people. I think that'll work quite well because we have a good chunk of money. So let's just make sure our people are happy because some of them are getting unhappy because they don't have access to enough types of food and stuff. And look at that, 400 now in our treasury. We've got 24 and that's got an achievement about employing 24 retainers. And now what we're going to do is try and import full armor sets for all of them. There you go. So they're all maxed out on armor tier as well. Now, I did say I was going to actually change the color on them all. I'm not going to change the armors because that will take forever. But I'm going to change all their main armor to have a bit of purple. There we go. So if we take a look now, pretty much all of them have a bit of purple on their main like chest plate. So they're all kind of matching. And that cost us a lot of money. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop taxing our people. Because growth is the main thing to us. We've maxed out our retinue that we can get. So we don't really need to tax. I'd rather our people just be happy, to be honest, and keep the money themselves. Oh, so when they wear plate armor, they don't also wear the gambesons like on top or anything. So they wear the chainmail instead of the gambesons. So gambesons are kind of pointless to us now. So we'll go to our the tailor we have, and I guess you may as well start producing some clothes instead. 
That costs one linen and one dye. And we should have some dye already made for us. Zero. Oh, we need people working there. So we get two families making some dye. And we'll open a trade route for some clothes. So we'll start that trade route. And we're going to export any over a surplus of 20. Yeah, everybody's complaining about food variety. When on the market, we literally have like every type of food almost, I guess. Some of it's taking a while to get to the marketplace. Yeah, loads of us stay in here. So how do I get it to hurry up and leave? Do I need more people working in the granary? Not really, I don't think. We'll add two... You know what? We'll just fill out the granary and see if these guys start moving things. Although the traders actually have market stalls. So the problem we're having is them actually getting the food on the market quick enough. I don't really know how to speed that up. Maybe a horse? Does a horse help? We do need more space now though. So I guess we'll add that. Although what we could do is when we get the horse... Add livestock here. Can we do that? Yeah, advanced. Hmm. So the horses can't work here, but they can order them. Okay, maybe we'll start doing that then. So what we're going to want to do is go to construction, go to logistics and get... We're going to get two hitching posts. We'll chuck them there and there. And then we'll upgrade them both to stables. And we'll see if we can get enough oxen then to work over here. I don't, know what, I don't really know what the horse does. Like, I don't know what good horses are. But I guess maybe assigning some ox to constantly work in the trading post could be useful. I believe we can assign some to other workplaces as well, like a logging camp. So let's do that. Maybe it'll make them more efficient. Okay, I'm trying to assign a second ox to work in a trading post, but for some reason it will not let me add more than one. And if we look, we actually have five that are unassigned, but for some reason we can't. But having that one ox there, we still have loads of stuff here. But if we check the market now... Food variety is up to 96%. So that has made an absolute massive difference on getting the food. 100%. But we now have 90, basically 100% food variety. 81 approval, which will start going up now. And we have over 300 population with 93 families. So we are maxed out on housing space once again. And we are having no trouble right now. Pretty soon, we're going to start a second town, which I think will give us some issues. Because they're going to be away from the market and stuff. So I, I'm interested to see how that goes. I just want to expand this town a tiny bit more. Fill out some of these gaps. Get some houses in there. Just going to fill houses in now where we can really. And what I might do, I think it'll look quite nice. Is if we put a road, not all the way. Just kind of like that. And then we can get some houses in this way as well. Facing the opposite direction. Now, this is very awkward to build in. <laughs> houses do not want to go here. That's one house for some reason. The most inefficient house of all time. You know what? Sure, just give it to them. I bet it's better than empty space, isn't it? And I want to see if I can get one more around this saw pit. There we go. So that whole space is now full of houses all going different directions. I mean, we are moving towards the industrial zone. But you know what? I think that's okay. Hopefully, you know, people working the saw pit, the logging camp, they will move up into these houses. There we go. So we've got a bunch of houses being built at this end now. And we're out the timber once again. 14 more houses. So let's see if we can actually manage these. 4,000 regional wealth. Um, what is selling so well? Something's selling well. Anyway, I'm making us tons of money. We would be really rich if we were taxing them, but I see no reason to tax them, to be honest with you. Nice, and these houses are being built nice and fast. A lot of them have expanded living space as well. And the ones that don't, we can just upgrade straight away to tier 3. Okay, so all them houses that were just placed, as you can see, I have gone ahead and actually upgraded them all to tier three and I, I gotta say i'd love your opinions but how do you think this looks so far the only thing that lets it down is these like vegetable patches and this house that got upgraded and for some reason decided it deserved a front garden and it looks awful but other than those houses i'm starting to think our town is looking quite nice especially now with all the empty space filled out over here it looks pretty good and of course all the new houses on this side as well so we've got a nice little chunk of houses over there. I got one more charcoal burner down because we had a lot of firewood, but like no charcoal on the market. And of course, all the houses we built over here as well, upgraded to tier three. And of course, our little farming zone as well. That house um, is growing another house, but th that's okay. So our village is looking like that. Now, part two should be out tomorrow. I would carry on today, but it's already almost 8 p.m. And I've got a try and get this video out tomorrow so i've got to go through about five hours of footage tonight and try and edit it down so that's gonna be fun but yeah 
Let me know what you think of this town so far. I'm really, really, really happy with it. So I'm interested to hear what you think. But thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.